evening. Good evening. It's day 11, journey to become wealthy. And today is Sunday. Tomorrow, Making tomorrow Monday, of course. Um, Y'all know Monday. Market come back open. We're going to do our thing. Market Monday, do our thing. Um, you know, that this is becoming our routine. On Sunday, we're going to look at what can we find for Monday market. So we're going to check out the futures the night before to kind of see what's going on. See, do we even want to waste our time in the market tomorrow? Do we want to get in there? Do we want to watch it? You know, so Sunday, we prepare for Monday. And, you know, I, I think we have some good news. I was looking into it earlier about the debt ceiling. And I think there was a bill passed so that the Democratic Party does not need all of the Republic Party in order to pass the debt ceiling raise increase. But that means as long as majority of the Congress vote in, in favor of the debt ceiling increase, then I think we'll have a good go. So that, that, that was good news. Um, we talked about inflation last week. We talked about inflation going up and how that could negatively affect uh, the, the market. Um, so although inflation did go up, there was a thing saying, I, I found an article saying that they're, um, they're, the feds are trying to fight against the current you know, constant increase of inflation because it went up 6.8%. That's large. Most of us don't even get a 6.8% pay raise annually. So the fact that the inflation rates have gone up 6.8% this year and that's year over year. So that means you're going to see it. It means you can buy less things, right? So inflation goes up, prices go up, your your dollar is now worth less, and that's a big thing. So let's check out the futures. Let's check out the futures. <clears throat> All right, so we got the Dow up 0.35, S&P 500 up 1.29, and the NASDAQ up 0.39. So that's not too bad. Um, I, this is something I, I forgot to kind of mention to y'all the other day. So we, you know, we look for, if we're looking for daily stocks, so like something to play with on the day, on, on the same futures website, it shows you pre-market move, movers. So you got the gainers and losers. So that that's a big deal. You know, something that you can use if you're trading and you want to make some money, you know, you're looking for a stock to get into, or you look for something new to invest in. This is always good to look. So the futures, that quick look at futures in the CNN website is pretty useful. Um, one thing I did want to show y'all, seeing that we were talking about um, inflation, the currencies. You see that? Our dollars becoming less. You see that? Every time European over USD, USD over Canada, our dollars becoming less. And majority of these categories, even Bitcoin is over USD, negative 2%. So it's just some, something to look at. And we can pretty much, you know, lump that in, right? That is the, we lump that in with the fact that inflation is going up. And until we start fighting some of those things, we may see a lot of volatility in the market. Okay, so, <clears throat> so good news for the week, going into the week, debt ceiling increase. That's good news, meaning the U.S. has more money to spend. We can borrow more money. And, you know, pretty much they're going to continue to try and stimulate the economy. Bad news, inflation went up. Um, let's see what else we got. We're going to check out some of these articles. Let's see if we see anything good in any of these articles. Stark futures rise slightly after S&P 500 notches best week since February. So last week was the best week for the S&P 500 since February at an all-time high. That's good news. Um, crypto. <clears throat> crypto has been coming down. Crypto has been coming down let me let me show y'all i got my crypto page up right here so i got coinbase up crypto bitcoin came back down it was up to fifty thousand on yesterday ethereum <clears throat> came back down tether and i again i'm telling y'all i'm thinking this may be due to the debt ceiling increase so now people who put their money into crypto trying to get out of the market may have took it back out of crypto taking some profit off and putting it back into the market. So that again, that's another positive thing we can see. Shiba back up 2%, Dogecoin down 1%. Uh 
Oh, yeah, I did put some more money in Crow. Crypto.com coin. I, I have found some, some news on it. And let me see if I can find it for y'all. I found some news on it, and I think it's going to pump it up. So Shiba and Crow right now, I'm trying. I'm, I'm in those, and I'm holding, especially for the long term, because I'm hoping they pump up. Hoping to make some good money on those, too. So let me see what I can find on Crow. I saw some news on Crow. Crow. Crypto coin. And let's see if we can find if there's something, you know, worthwhile. News. Put in news. Coin. Big news. Price increased. That was one day ago. So I don't, I, I don't know where I found it, but if I find it, I'll definitely speak on it for y'all tomorrow. But let's look. We, I see a, a crow price prediction. We've got some price predictions in here already for it. And this is a fairly new coin. The latest price on Crypto.com coin crow is 0.59, which is 4.6% higher than 24 hours ago. Um, let's see what the price predictions are. Let's see if we can find a price prediction. I don't see a price prediction here, but that's what it, the name of the article was. Yeah. Well, again, another one. But I, when I find that news, I'll be sure to share it with y'all. So just looking at that, looking at the futures... Let's go. Let's, we'll go check out our stock heat map. Yeah, I know we gotta we gotta stick with what we do. We gotta stick stay consistent, right? So we want to check out our futures and want to check out our stock heat map every time. Let's see what our stock heat map shows us. Oh man, this is beautiful right here. Let's flip the screen over for y'all. So, uh, so y'all see we got some green here, and which a lot of this sector is actually red in technology. A lot of it's actually red, so that that could be a a, a forewarning. But Microsoft is up two percent. That's good. Nvidia is down. Apple's still up. Apple's still running, I guess. But that's two percent from last week. Um, looks like mostly the technology sector has a lot of red in it. It has some red and some green, but it's mixed. Semiconductors are doing good, and communications is doing well. So those, um, I don't know, we may want to stay away from the technology sector this week. We may want to stay away from it. That's something to keep our eye on. We got the communications and the consumer goods. So communication services is looking about the same as technology sector. Let's go over here. And so household goods, health, and stuff like that, that's actually looking mostly green. So this may be where we want to shop at this week. We may want to shop over here in this area where we got Procter & Gamble, we got... Walmart up 1%, Costco, Target. Looks like majority of these are actually up in the up in the green. So we may want to shop over here this week. So where normally, you know, we talked about um, Apple on last week. We was in the technology sector, which Apple is still booming, as y'all see. It's up 2.8%. So, you know, if you're going to buy long term, I say, hey, jump in. You know, put a little something in. When it come back down, add more. So you average down on your price. Um, average down. That's something I guess I need to explain to y'all. For some people, you know, new investors, averaging down. <clears throat> so we looking at our sectors. We see as far as sectors, consumer defense and real estate and utilities may be our good plays for this week. And I can only assume that money's been moved over there because people are trying to be safe. They want to be safe. They want to, you know, financials and consumer defense and real estate. They want to make safe plays. So, you know, they're assuming that the market may come down and technologies usually come down. But there's also a cycle. So there's also a cycle where our money is rotated between these sectors. So you, one year you'll see money in, well, a month, two months, three months, a quarter maybe. You'll see money heavy in technology. Then you'll see it heavy in financials. Then you'll see it heavy in communications, heavy in healthcare, heavy in consumers. So we're going into January with the new year. And again, this is how I, what I think. So there's a possibility that money's being rotated now because of all the things going on, all the news going on. So we got to be careful and we'll look for that. Again, that's why we check our stock heat map. We'll check it again in the morning to kind of see where we where we want to look at and where we're going to invest in. But averaging down. So averaging down, let's say you bought um, Bitcoin at $50,000 yesterday. When it hit that $50,000, you bought some. You bought you $100 worth. That, that means your average is now $50,000. Your average is 50000 But you saw Bitcoin came down today. It's down right now to $48,860. $48,860. So you buy another 
it's going to bring your average down. So now your average for Bitcoin will no longer be $50,000. It'll be somewhere between the two. So it may be 49 or 48 somewhere, you know, somewhere, it'll, but it'll be lower. So now it makes it easier for you to make money when it goes up. So you bring your average down. So say we're going to pick a smaller number, right? So I have charge point. I have charge point and the price of it currently is $20 and 16 cents. My average is 2170. If I buy another hundred shares of charge point at 2016, $20 and 16 cents, it'll bring my average closer to that $20 and 16 cents. The way when the price increases, it makes it easier for me to make a profit. So I can take profit quicker that way. So those are things like that. So that that's what averaging down means. So don't get scared, y'all. When we see these plays going down, we see our stocks dropping, we see us losing money. If you have more money, which I always put a piece of my money in. If I know I want to spend four hundred dollars on something, I put a hundred dollars in the first time when I first get it in. So it puts this on my list. It's one of the things I'm watching. And usually Robinhood or Webull will give you price movement. It, it lets you know, hey, this stock dropped five percent. When I see it drop 5%, that's that's a note for me to go, okay, let me go look at this and let me see if it's another buying opportunity for me to, for me to buy more. So I buy another $100, okay, it dropped 5%, we buy another $100, that brings my average down, and now I have more stock in this company. And I, that that's right there, that's my two, that's two times, I usually got three, three strikes. That third time, if it comes down some more, 10% or whatever, I put my third one hundred dollars in there, and then now I'm fully in. Okay, boom! Now it's just time for me to watch this sucker ride, especially if I got it at the high point. Charge point. This is actually a low point, and I already have my position established in here. So I have a hundred shares of charge point. I feel good about it. That uh, and my average. I'm only like a dollar and seventy cent off, so I'm not losing much money. But when it goes back up, I'll take my profits off the top, and actually I've already taken profits out of charge point. This is my second time buying in it. It went up to $28. I sold some. I took the profit and now it came down. I'm buy, I bought more. So, you know, that's how we trade. That's swing trading. I saw it go up. I took some profits. It came back down. I bought some more. So now I'm buying it cheaper. I brought my average down. So those are the type of things we look to do. And especially on this week, we're going to try and get in here. We're going to see if we can find us some stocks to buy. Hopefully we have a good green week. Seeing that we know that the debt ceiling increase. That's, that has to be done by December 15th, which is Wednesday. So hopefully that's done and voted on. So hopefully we see some green in the market. Currently, seeing that the futures are up, I'm going to say we may have some green this week. And that's what we're hoping for. We always see it go down on Friday, so it's not a big deal. But hopefully on Market Monday on open, we see. I'm, I think we're going to see it come down first thing in the morning. People are going to be selling, and I think it's going to start to come back up, and we're going to end on a positive note on Monday. So that's what I have for y'all. If nobody has any questions, I'm going to let y'all have a good night and I'll see y'all tomorrow.